This podcast was created by Caitlin Goss and Sarah Hamilton. Who was Sarah Weddington? Sarah Weddington was an American attorney, a law professor, and an advocate for women's rights and reproductive health. She dedicated her life to improving opportunities for women all across the United States. Sarah was born on February 5th, 1945 in Abilene, Texas, to Lena Catherine and Herbert Doyle Raggle, a Methodist minister. Sarah died on December 26, 2021, at the age of 76, in her home in Austin, Texas. As a Methodist minister's daughter, Sarah was raised in an extremely religious family. Due to her religious upbringing, Sarah was the president of the Methodist Youth Fellowship at her church, played the organ, and sang in the church choir. In her book, Sarah mentioned that the praise she received from church members and friends of her parents for those performances helped build in me a solid sense of confidence in my abilities to accomplish whatever I set out to do. In an interview conducted with Life Stories, Sarah mentioned that she was also the secretary of the Student Body Council. She and her roommate wanted to be more involved, but the dean of the school said that women were not allowed to be anything more than secretaries. Sarah and her roommate found a way around this by having both of their boyfriends become president and vice president so they could secretly be more involved in the school without breaking the rules. It was clear from a young age that Sarah knew what she was capable of and nothing anyone said or did would prevent her from completing whatever she set her mind to. Sarah graduated high school two years early and then attended McMurray University in Texas and graduated with her bachelor's in English. Sarah was told that she could be either a secretary, nurse, or teacher. Sarah originally decided to be a teacher and to teach eighth grade. After her student teaching, she decided that teaching was not for her and decided to pursue law. Sarah's motivation to attend law school was due to the dean at McMurray College stating that no woman from this college has ever gone to law school. It would be too tough. This motivated Sarah to attend the University of Texas Law School. Sarah knew this was going to be challenging because she was only one of five women to be enrolled in her law school class of 120 people, but this did not stop her. She graduated in the top quarter of her class from the University of Texas Law School, receiving her Juris Doctorate in 1967. While attending college, university professor Phyllis Bridges recalled that Sarah didn't want to be a burden to her family. She didn't want to burden her family, so she moved to Austin and took two jobs to pay for law school. One of these jobs included working as a medical librarian in a hospital. Sarah also joined a graduate student group at the University of Austin, Texas, where they were conducting research in ways to challenge anti-abortion statutes. After graduating, Sarah found it very hard to find a job with a law firm, but eventually began working towards more opportunities for women. At the age of 26, Sarah Weddington first presented the case of Roe v. Wade in front of a three-judge district court in Dallas. The court agreed that the abortion laws in Texas were unconstitutional, but the state still appealed the decision, therefore taking the case to be presented in the United States Supreme Court. By January of 1973, the court's decisions had overturned Texas abortion laws and legalized abortion throughout the United States. This was a huge win for all women across the United States. In 1972, Sarah became the first woman from Travis County to work in the Texas Legislature. She served a total of three terms. While serving in the Texas Legislature, Sarah and the four other women in the Legislature worked towards giving women access to credit, preventing pregnant teachers from being fired, 
and rape reform. In 1977, Sarah attended the National Women's Conference in Houston as a Texas delegate speaking on the resolution of women's reproductive rights. Within the same year, President Jimmy Carter chose Sarah to serve as a part of the United States Department of Agriculture, where she oversaw WIC, the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, and international trade agreements related to agricultural products. Impressed by the stellar work Sarah portrayed, Carter asked Sarah to join him in the White House as his assistant regarding women's issues from 1978 to 1981. Sarah also lectured at Texas Women's University and founded the Weddington Center. The Weddington Center is an institution dedicated to preparing women to take on successful roles in business and public service. The Weddington Center has three different specialized centers. These centers include a center for student leadership, a center for women entrepreneurs, and a center for women in politics and public policy. Overall, the Weddington Center is a place for women to ensure they have the needed education to establish careers and be able to develop skills for entrepreneurial businesses and the framework necessary to run for public office. Sarah later served as a speaker and professor at the University of Texas until 2012. Sarah was the first speaker in the Texas Women's Jameson Lecture Series that was nationally or internationally recognized by scholars and civic leaders of Texas Women's University. Sarah Weddington's life was full of many major accomplishments. Sarah is most known for representing Jane Roe, otherwise known as Norma McCovey, and winning the Roe v. Wade case in the United States Supreme Court. But this was just the first accomplishment of many. Sarah was also the first woman general counsel for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Sarah received the Planned Parenthood Federation of America's Margaret Sanger Women of Valor Award in 1980. This award is the highest honor and is presented to recognize excellence, leadership, and outstanding contributions to reproductive health and rights. Sarah holds honorary doctorate degrees from McMurray University, Hamilton College, Austin College, Southwestern University, and Nova Southeastern University. In an interview with Chambers Associate, Sarah was asked what achievement she was most proud of. In response, she stated, changing the world for U.S. women so that now they have far wider options, especially about reproductive choices. Sarah Weddington lived alone in her Austin, Texas home until she died at the age of 76 due to declining health. Many have speculated that her health decline and death were due to the U.S. Supreme Court overturning the original Roe v. Wade case she had fought so hard to enact. But according to her former student and colleague, Susan Hayes, it was not immediately clear what caused her death, but she had been in poor health for some time. Sarah Weddington paved the way for women's reproductive rights and continues to be a prominent advocate in the fight for reproductive justice even after she passed. Sarah inspired many women to become advocates and leaders and fight for what they deserve. In the same interview as mentioned before, the Chambers Associates interview, Sarah was asked, how would you like to be remembered? She responded, I believe that leadership is the willingness and the ability to make a difference. I would like to be remembered as someone who used law as the path to make a difference for millions of people. Sarah Weddington knew that she could make a difference for not only her own rights, but the rights of every woman in the United States. Sarah should always be remembered as a woman who challenged social constructs for the betterment of all women. Although Sarah Weddington has sadly passed, her legacy and memorial will live on while women today continue to fight for their reproductive rights. Miss Weddington was able to translate her beliefs in the fundamental rights and freedom of the individual into action that served to improve the life and health 
of all American women.